Good morning, welcome to the Dipmikes YouTube channel where I discuss various aspects of speakers. My particular favourite has always been a two-way stand mount speaker. I absolutely love the way the tonality of a two-way speaker, the imaging of a two-way speaker, particularly reasonably small on a stand and British. And that's exactly what we've got here. We've got a speaker made by a company called AVI. AVI are famous for their um, AVI Neutron and just in the world of physics, the neutron is neutral. It has no charge, no positive or negative charge. I think the concept with the neutron from AVI was a very neutral sounding speaker. And that's kind of what they've done here, but they've just made it bigger. And I've got to say, they've, they've succeeded, but they've come up with the worst name ever. These are the AVI Bigatrons, which remind me of... <laughs> Yeah, so a childhood favourite cartoon of mine. So what have we got here? We've got Scanspeak Tweeter, Silk Soft Dome Tweeter. Scanspeak are famous. Loads of manufacturers have used Scanspeak Tweeters in the past. My spendors over there have Scanspeak Tweeters. Loads and loads of manufacturers use them. They're very famous tweeter man or driver manufacturer. And we've got a VIFA base driver. So that's another brand that only make drive units. And VIFA, again, loads and loads of people have used VIFA drive units over the years. Um, I believe my uh, Dacus Solitaires had VIFA base drivers. I think the very, might be the Celef uh, Domestic 2s. I think they have VIFA base drivers. I'm not 100% sure on that. But VIFA are a famous brand. So let's have a listen to these and let's see how they sound. Just quickly, um, this is the system I'm gonna be using today. So we've got the AVI Bigatrons on target 60 centimeter lead field stands. And I'm gonna be running the Pioneer Air Studios combination with the iPhone going around the back into the Burr Brown uh, inboard DAC. We've got reasonable silver um, interconnect and silver cable, and Russ Andrews power cables. So that's what we're gonna be running um, for these for these to be playing today. Okay, we're all set up, so they're on the 60 centimeter lead field stands, and these are a very well-made cabinet. No real massive resonance in there, so they're quite stiff. Um, they're quite a deep cabinet for their, for their width, so a nice narrow baffle, baffle, in my opinion, often gives you a very decent stereo imaging. Um, let's give them a play and see how they sound. It begins to tell round midnight, round midnight. I do pretty well till after sundown. Summer time. But it really gets bad round midnight. Memories always start round midnight, round midnight. Haven't got the to stand those memories. So on vocal stuff, they sound fantastic. No coloration in the mid-range at all. The bass is quite, quite deep, but it's not particularly loud. And that's fairly usual of an infinite baffle or sealed cabinet. But very, very, very nice to listen to this, certainly nothing about them that I dislike. Um, similar sounding to my Pro-X Studio 100s. The 100s do have more low end, they're a different design, uh, bigger base unit and front ported, so that's not really a fair comparison. But these do have their place and I quite enjoy listening to them.
they will punish a poor recording. If you put something through that's not particularly well recorded, like a lot of speakers, the more revealing they are, obviously they reveal the flaws in the recording. Uh, I remember somebody saying to me once, the higher and higher end your equipment gets, the smaller and smaller your music collection gets. Well, none of us really want that. I've got to also say that this setup is nowhere near as accurate or as powerful or as revealing as what I usually use, but that's been disassembled because I'm waiting to upgrade that. But this is not a bad setup by any means, but I would imagine with my usual setup, these would sound even better. Probably give them a little bit more drive, a little bit more low end grunt, a little bit more control. As, as I've said before, this is only 55 watts per channel at eight tones. The Meridian's 200, so that's a massive difference in control, damping factor, and sort of current drive. But even on this modest setup, these sound really good. I'm very pleased to have had a chance to review the AVI Bigatrons. I actually own these, I'm gonna keep these. A friend of mine's got the AVI Neutrons, which I really enjoyed listening to, so I thought I'd give these a go. Shame about the name, Bigatron, definitely reminds me of a baddie from the Transformers cartoon but I can live with that if I don't tell anybody what they're called. Um, reasonably attractive, very attractive cabinets, but reasonably attractive with the grills off and very unassuming like most speakers are with the grills on. But I think hidden away, not knowing the name, if you played these to somebody, they'd be quite shocked at how good they are. Anyway, that's the Ditton Works review for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you soon.